um, I wanted to fill you guys in on what's going on. First of all, those of you who know me know I spent over 25 years destroying myself slowly with drugs, meth mainly. I ripped a path of destruction through everybody's life who cares about me. All the while thinking, I'm just killing me. I'm just hurting me. How selfish is that? So I basically get off meth and then I drink and smoke weed and I fool myself into thinking that because I'm not on methamphetamine, I'm clean. And my wife took issue with that. Um, and she had every right to. But for several more years, I continued to drink. And every now and then, when I probably would have been doing meth, I would drink or smoke marijuana um, addictively. <laughs> um, and I met my biological family, my mom. I'm blessed to have two wonderful, completely different moms. And earlier today, I wanted them both. <laughs> when I was in Virginia with my family, Cheryl and the kids. I started to have this stomach problem. Um, because of my lifestyle, because I used to lift weights, there's, there's many things that can cause what I'm about to talk about, and I'm sorry I'm about to talk about it, guys, but this is it. I've had hemorrhoids or whatever, so I thought that's what this was. And then three weeks later, I'm still bleeding really bad, and I can't hardly go to the restroom. Um, and I used to take pride in, I could knock off three bowel movements by lunch. So that hit me in my immortality issue. I'm the idiot that shot myself in the hand to see what it felt like. But I've been brought to my knees by this, and here's why. When I went to the doctor today and I showed her pictures of some toilet paper that I had used and um, she did an exam, she didn't feel any hemorrhoids. That's the second doctor. I saw the look on my practitioner's face with the pictures and then after the exam and she looked at me and she said, Hunter, you know, this could potentially be bad. And y'all know, if you know me, I used humor. I had everybody in the room laughing, but let me tell you something, I was dying inside. Why? Because I'm three days totally sober. Nothing. Well, except Copenhagen, but which is probably the last thing my body needs. However, three days clean from everything but the nicotine. And I get this news and these things are happening and it's I've been in so much pain. I haven't taken pain pills. I haven't gone to anything I know to use. And I pray that I don't. In three short days, I've watched a lot of the damage that the beer and weed did to my marriage. Heal. I've watched my wife, who's always had my back. I watched my wife fear and hurt and worry about me. But the crazy thing is, the one thing that hit me on the walk into the car today when we left the doctor's office was what a crappy husband I've been, what a crappy dad. Everybody says I'm such a good dad in this day and age. To be a good dad, you just gotta show up sometimes. Well, I'm a stay-at-home parent. I'm not a good dad. No dad who would do, no dad that was good would do what I did. I love my children. I love my wife. My wife and I have gone at each other more than anybody I've ever known. But at the end of the day, we still love each other very much. And I 
was walking out to the car today and I took my mask off my face and I just slammed the mask down on the on the floorboard. I put my feet on the dashboard. I never do that. I had my legs all bent up to my chest and I started to weep. Not because I'm scared to die. I've lived every day of my adult life since 19 like I didn't give a crap if I lived or died. What I give a crap about <laughs> is being better. Um, if I died right now, my legacy would be, there would be no legacy. I want my children and my family to be proud of me. I want to be known as an actual good dad and husband, spiritual leader. <laughs> I've been a piece of crap. I've been mean. I'm spoiled. I'm a man child, actually, in many, many ways. I'm trying to raise a young man. I have a little daughter that... I, God's will will be done no matter what. Live or die. It's a win for me. However, I have to be better. This has made me realize that the time I have left on this earth, whether it's six months or 60 years, is so important to keep my head up, keep my eyes on God, tell my addiction to shut up, and be a better man. Now, I've posted video after video. I've done this. I, I don't know what's happening to my body right now. I know it's something bad. It's something painful. It's I'm, I'm not asleep right now, and gosh knows I want to be, but I had to drink this stuff today, so I'm basically a fountain. But, a, eh. but that problem's still there. So what am I dwelling on? Not that. Ah, not that. I just rock back and forth on the toilet. <laughs> I'm thinking about my wife, my kids, the people who love me the most, and have endured the most pain and damage and confusion from me, self-destructing. I have never felt more selfish. I have never felt more guilty, but I've also never had those two things motivate me. I cried out to God not to live because I got that. Live or die, my belief is. <laughs> It, it, is that it's eternal and, and even though we're not supposed to be of this world and I don't care about what people think but I do care about what the people who love me and who supported me and who've walked through this with me I do care what they think and I do care what legacy I leave I've never been more motivated to be a good man. Cheryl and I fell into this pattern of trying to make each other understand each other's pain in mean ways. And she needed me to understand that I was a crappy husband. And I needed her to understand that me being a crappy husband made her a crappy wife. Is it my fault? Yes. But we are both to blame because we are both a lot alike in the spoiled category. <laughs> But she looked at me today and she said, you cannot die. And I told her, I said, hey, <laughs> make it happen. You made a man who told people to get out of his life because his drugs always showed up and did their job for him and people didn't. Three days sober. Not for her, for us, for me, for my babies. <laughs> And I started to think about Harper and Gracie. <laughs> I can't leave things with them the way they are. If something is going on, it's going to be bad in the outcome. I can't. I've never been more motivated to grow up and get my crap in order.
I don't care if I live or die in the eternal aspect. <laughs> but I promise you this, if it is something bad, I will fight with everything I have to make the time I've got left a redemption, a I will atone. I don't know why Cheryl's still with me. I don't know why I'm still with her other than that's exactly where we are supposed to be. <laughs> I've heard prison doors slam. I have had seizures from overdoses. I've run the gamut of a junkie. But there's one thing I haven't done. And that's fixed the crap I broke with the people who love me. I selfishly walked through this addiction for all these years, thinking I was just hurting me. How narrow-minded, blind, how stupid. And I look at my kids, and I, I look at Cheryl and her face today. <laughs> I got a lot of work to do, and I don't. I don't care how much time I have left on this earth. But the time I do have left on this earth, I will not damage my loved ones with my crap. I mean, I should be dead a thousand times over. But I started to get my life right and I met Cheryl and we have our kids and things are so beautiful. God has opened up so many wonderful new avenues in my life. And I'm worried about what my legacy will be. I'm worried about what kind of taste I leave in people's mouths when I'm gone. Meaning my family. I don't want my wife to go, oh my God, I miss him. But thank God that tyrant or that Tasmanian devil or that idiot or that dick is dead. <laughs> Let God have him. Let him be perfect there because he was absolutely imperfect here. <laughs> this may sound like a ramble, guys, but I've been up for a couple days. Not on dope. I've been up because I can't sleep. I always feel like I need to evacuate my bowels. It's just blood. It's crazy. It's frightening. It's not normal. It's invincible me coming to terms with the fact that I am, in fact, not. <laughs> am I afraid? Yes. I've turned down pain medicine and probably need it. But you know what? I want to feel this. I want to feel this. I deserve to feel every stitch, every ounce of pain, every ounce of relief, everything. I will not run from it and medicate it. I won't. Is it stupid? I shot myself in the hand, guys. That's kind of my forte. I'm sorry, this is a ramble, but I was sitting on the throne a minute ago watching a video by Billy Graham, and let me tell you something. God is good, and God is here, and he cares. He's not doing this to me, I did this to me, but you know what? I can already feel him at work, and I welcome it. Oh, I may also be awake still because of the fact that I'm sober three days in and like, you know, I'm not I. I mean, I'm not, I'm not doing anything that I would normally do to, you know, weed kind of. My brain's like, oh, what's happening? My rectum's like, hey, dude, something's wrong down here. My brain, my, I, it's crazy how in touch with my body I have become over the past few weeks. But more importantly, I'm getting back in touch with my family. Thank you for letting me ramble. Keep your head up. Thank you for thinking about me here. Praying for me and all of that. I love you. But I'll keep this thing going now. This is definitely something I'm going to want to put out there because I'm scared. I don't want to not see my kids grow up. Never gave, pardon my language, a damn seemingly about that. As long as I've got a breath in my body, I will strive to be a better man, rise above, do what's right. I guess this has made me grow up my butthole 
has turned me into a man. <laughs> uh, hugs, everybody.